Stops can be a really useful tool to manage risk and protect profits, so today we're going to learn how they work and how to use them on the Tasty Trade platform. Also, if you haven't opened an account with them yet, consider using my link down below. Now, generally speaking, stops are going to be used to close out of a position and limit your losses in the event the stock moves against you. So for example, if we bought stock at $50 and wanted to exit if it ever dropped below $48, we might decide to use a stop. If we instead use a real-life example in my Tasty Trade account, looking here on my positions page, you can currently see I've got one share of Palantir. We can see the stock last traded for $15.82. It looks like I bought it originally for $13, and overall I'm up $2.82 since buying it. This is obviously a really small position, but if I wanted to protect a portion of those profits, I could decide to put a stop at $14. Essentially just saying if Palantir ever drops below 14, I want to get out of the trade automatically and at least keep it looks like about a dollar of profit. So now in order to do that on a position I already hold in the account, I'm going to start by coming over here to my position and just right clicking on it. Within that little menu there, I'll then find and click on the button here that says close position. That is going to automatically take me to my trade page, and right down here at the bottom of my screen, you can see I've already got an order ticket out here to sell this stock. So looking here from left to right, it says I want to sell one share of Palantir, obviously, with a limit price of $15.86. In order for us to adjust that to a stop, we're going to head over here to the order type box on the right, where it currently says limit. And now within that little pop-up window, we're going to see a stop market order and a stop limit order. These two orders are nearly identical, but the key difference is the type of order that gets submitted when the stop activates. So for example, let's start by selecting the stop market order. We can then see a box here on the left allowing us to enter our stop price. So right here in my case, I want to adjust that to $14. Now, because this is a stop market order, I'm essentially telling Tasty Trade that if the stock ever trades for $14 or lower, I want them to automatically sell my share using a market order. So I'm telling them I'll take whatever the next best price is after it trades for $14, I just want to get out immediately. So that could be $14 right where I put my stop, it could be lower, it could be $13.99, or it could be even significantly lower than that if the stock is dropping quickly. However, what it guarantees is that I will exit my trade and I'm going to sell my share automatically. Now, the key thing to remember about stops is that they're only active during the regular market hours. So if the move happens in the pre or post market, this order is going to do absolutely nothing until the market opens back up. So let's just say, for example's sake, Palantir announces some really horrible news in the pre-market and it drops to $12 a share. Because I'm using a stop order, this isn't going to activate until the market opens up. So when the market does open and Palantir is still trading at $12, my stop is going to activate since it is less than $14, and I'm going to end up selling my stock at the next best available price, which in this case is $12. Obviously that is way lower than what I was expecting, but it did exit the trade and I'm now out of my position. That's a really crazy example that's definitely not a common occurrence, but it can happen. And despite this, most people still tend to use stop market orders since it will exit the trade and close the position, which is really the entire point. However, there still might be times when you'd like to put in a very specific price boundary, essentially a limit to what you'd be willing to sell the stock for. And that's where the stop limit comes in. So coming back over here to the right and flipping the order type back over from stop market to stop limit, we can now see a brand new price box appears right below our stop activation price. So what this is going to do is act as the lowest price that we're willing to accept when selling the stock. So in this example, let's still say I wanted to exit Palantir if it ever drops below 14. So I'm going to leave the stop set to 14. But I didn't want to sell for anything lower than what I originally bought the stock for, which in this case was $13. So now coming back down here, we'll set that limit price down to 13. And now using the exact same example as before, if Palantir were to drop to $12 in the pre-market, this stop limit order would do nothing until the market opens up. Now once it does open and the stock is still trading for $12, my stop is going to activate since it is trading for less than 14. However, this time I'm going to send out a limit order to sell my stock at $13 or higher. 
So this time I would not sell my stock because it's trading below my limit price and it would only fill if the stock moved back up above $13. Now, just to be clear, neither of these stop order types is perfect. We still don't know what's gonna happen next. We don't know what the stock is gonna do. So they both have their own risks. If the stock were to continue to fall, you'd probably wish you would use a stop market order and just sold your stock. But if the stock started to move back up, you'd probably be glad you use a stop limit order. So just be aware of how they work and pick the risk that you're more comfortable with. But now that we have those set, the very last thing that I might want to do is adjust how long this stop is going to remain active for. If we come over here to the right, at the moment I have the time in force or TIFF set today. So if I don't get stopped out by 4 p.m. Eastern time tonight, the order is just going to cancel itself and I'll have to put out the order again tomorrow if I wanted to. If I instead came here and flipped this over to, let's say, GTC or good until canceled, this is now going to go out every single day until it fills or until I cancel it. But finally, once everything looks good, I'll come down below and hit the review and send button down here in the lower right hand corner. I can then confirm everything looks right here in this order ticket, which in this case it does. So we'll then hit send to actually submit it. Once the trade has been placed, if we head back to the positions page right up here at the top, we can then find our stop order right below my current position. So right here it says I've got a stop order out there to stop me out if the stock ever drops below 14 bucks. And right there in the little pop-up, it says it's gonna activate a limit order to go out there at $13. From this page, if you ever need to cancel this order or edit it in some way, you could do it by right-clicking on the order itself. So right here, we're gonna right-click on it. Then within that little pop-up menu, we can either click on cancel order to outright cancel it, or we could come down below and hit replace order if we want to edit it or adjust it in some way. In my case, I just want to cancel it for now. So we'll come up here and hit cancel order. And that's going to be how you're going to place a stop on a position you already hold. If you instead wanted to attach the stop to a brand new trade, the process is going to be a little bit different. We'll begin by coming up here to the search box at the top and typing in the symbol that we wanted to trade. In this case, I'm going to throw in Apple or AAPL. We can now see what the stock last traded for, 178.02 it looks like. It looks like it's down 16 cents today. And right now we can see the current bid and asking price. What I want to do first is buy Apple stock. So I'm going to start by clicking on the stock's current asking price, 178.10 right here. Like before, this is going to automatically take us to the trade page where we can then find our order ticket right at the bottom of our screen. This is going to be our opening order, so we're going to fill it out just like normal. So in this example, I want to buy one share of Apple at, let's say, 170. So I only want to buy it if it drops down to 170 or lower. I'm going to leave it set to a limit order, but for this one, because it's probably not going to drop below 170 today, I'm going to go ahead and adjust this over to good until canceled. So again, this is going to be our opening order, the order to buy the stock. And then next, what I want to do is attach the stop to exit the stock if it ever drops below, let's say 165. Now, obviously, I only want this stop to be submitted if I actually buy the stock. So in order to do that, we're going to come down here to the lower left hand corner of our order ticket and click on the button marked bracket. The window that then appears right up here above is then going to show us the opening trade to buy the stock here on the left. While to the right, we have the profit taking order right up here above and the stop loss order right down here below. Now, unlike other platforms, Tasty Trade forces you to enter both. You can't just uncheck the profit taking order, so we will need to fill out both of them. And I'm going to say that if the stock ever hits, let's say 200, I want to sell it for a profit. So I'm going to go ahead and type in $200 in here. It also tells me that right down here below, that would be a 18% profit target. And if I remember right, I said I wanted my stop to activate if it ever dropped below 165. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there. You can also see that right below the stop price, I do have the ability to flip it over from a stop market order to a stop limit order. So I could put in a lower end threshold if I wanted to. But for now, I'm going to leave it set to stop market. And now that everything looks correct, I'm happy with all this. I'll come down below and hit review and send. I can now see a little confirmation box just showing me exactly how this order is going to happen. I'm first going to buy one share of Apple if it ever drops down to 170. And then if that order fills, it's then going to trigger these two orders to go out there, either to sell it if it ever goes up to 200 and take a profit of $30, or to get stopped out if it ever drops below 165 
and get stopped out before I lose more than five bucks. Since everything looks good, I'll then come down here below and hit send. And now just like before, if I wanted to keep track of that order, I could come back up here to the positions page and just to the right, we can see all three orders. The only one currently working is the order to buy the stock followed by our two pending orders, which are only going to get submitted once we actually buy it. If later down the line I wanted to cancel this entire thing, I could just right-click on any of these order tickets here, and then within that little pop-up menu, I could come over here to the left and hit Cancel Complex Order, and that's going to cancel all three order tickets. If I instead just wanted to edit one of these, or maybe just cancel one of these individually, I could go ahead and click away from this, and then just right-click on the one I wanted to cancel or edit. So in my case, let's say I didn't want this limit order working to the upside. I didn't actually want to have a profit taking order on this. I only wanted the stop to get me out if it fell. So what I'm going to do is find the limit order right here. I'm just going to go ahead and right click on it. Then within this little menu here on the left, I'm going to come over and click on cancel order. You can now see that that has been canceled. I only have the working order to buy it. And then if that fills, I then have a stop order to get me out if it falls below 165. But honestly, that covers the basics of placing stops within Tasty Trade. It's not too difficult, so you should be able to get the hang of it pretty quick. But for those of you who are looking to learn more, I have made a bunch of other videos on Tasty Trade, so consider checking out this video next. You might find it helpful as well. Otherwise, have a great week, everyone, and I hope to see you on the next video.